Okay, uh, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, it's my first SciPy, as I said. And, um, well, we have had some communication issues, I would say, with the scientific community. So I'm very happy to be here and expose, like, tell people what we do. In, and yes, hopefully you, you will join our community and, and embrace us. So I'm a PyPy contributor um, since around 2011. I did the Google Sum of Code on PyPy, and well, that's loud. Um, and um, since um, 2013, I've been hired to work on NumPyPy. NumPyPy is funded through donations from people like you, so it's really great that the community is able to giving me money to for me to do that. I'm very happy. And um, yes, one of my main interests is bringing more library and well, in particular the scientific libraries because well, PyPy doesn't have a very good story on that. And um, we're trying, so yes, NumPy is still the main thing we're trying to bring, but we're also working on bringing SciPy and Matplotlib especially. And um, yes, I'm on social media, uh, so if you want to like interact with me and connect, as we say, um, like you can send me questions and stuff like that. Um, I'm also a software consultant, so maybe you need like Python consult consultancy or like things related to PyPy performance or your, on your company, for example. So you can hire me if you want. So yes, what is PyPy? PyPy is an implementation of the Python language, which means that we basically take the same language as CPython. CPython is usually what you get when you type Python. So we're trying to copy the same behavior as Python and, and bring the maximum compatibility. Um, so why would you use like something like PyPy if you already have C Python, right? So um, speed I will do today is one of the main reasons you would use PyPy. We're working on on having bringing more and more optimization every time, and we're trying also like to bring down memory usage in some cases. But like speed is really the the main advantage of PyPy. So yes, as we say, we aim for maximum compatibility. Um, we don't target some subset of Python. We want really the entire Python language to be to be implemented. Um, there's, there are some places when we consider that what C Python is doing is like implementation specific. So we have we don't behave exactly like C Python in every cases, but it's pretty pretty good. So yes, Python is a great language, right? Who likes Python here? Yes, there's a lot of hands. Um, so it's great, right? So you, you don't want like, I prefer to write Python rather than C, for example, right? So Python is very dynamic. Um, well, you don't, it's pretty impossible to know the types of variables at static time. And you can almost like change everything. Like you can add methods at runtime, you can patch modules, you can do pretty crazy stuff. And it's also very easy to introspect and debug. So PDB is just, you can write PDB just in Python, right? And PDB doesn't know about any of the internals of Python. And well, for all those reasons, um, People say that Python is slow, but it's just not true. Like, it's just like we're too lazy to optimize it, but it's, you can, like, yes, Python is very dynamic and it's easy to introspect, but most of the time you don't use the dynamism. You don't use all the introspection features. So, like, you should only pay the cost for what you use.
So we have a benchmark suit that we run every night. Um, on, it's available on speed.pypy.org. Um, and yes, these are benchmarks that are pretty representative of like real usages. For example, we have like math. You, we have um, the like Django templating library is is benchmarked as well. And on these benchmarks, we are, we are 6.8 times faster, which is pretty good. But we want to get even better every time. So I don't have the timeline here, but like every few years we get a good, we get very, very fast. Like <laughs> PyPy became faster than C Python like three or four years ago. And now we're 6.8 times faster. So we keep optimizing. So how does PyPy do that? So we have what is called a tracing just-in-time compiler. So the way it works is that it works on loops as opposed to like regular compilers, like more standard compilers that work on functions. So we trace, we trace one iteration of a loop. So basically we record every operation that a loop does. And we only, we only trace one path every time so like if you have an if branch like we only take we only trace one if one one part of that if um so yes you get a linear trace of execution so inlining is very easy like it's just natural like by default it's inline and so since you have one path of execution you can do a lot of optimizations you can remove for example in Python, integers are objects, and so you have a lot of overhead when you want to like add integers, right? So yes, typically, like doing math on pure like on Python integers is compared to C is a lot slower, but we are able to remove that, remove all the overhead by doing what's called unboxing. So basically. Yes, an integer is an object, but most of the time you don't use it as an object, like 99% of the time. So we are able to see that, and we just use a machine integer instead of an integer object. We're also able to optimize objects. So method calls are, the cost of method calls is almost entirely removed. So we are able to, um, like for example, one tip that people have is avoid writing too many small functions, group all your code into one function, it will improve performance, but writing small functions is, is a good practice. Like, so you shouldn't have to choose between having horrible code and, well, horrible code and good performance and, or bad performance and good looking code, right? So yes, I have a quick demo of a real-time edge detection algorithm. So I have a video, not very interesting video of someone skiing. Okay, and I want to run edge detection on this. So I can, so I have written a program that does that, and well, it's a very naive program, right? It doesn't, it's written in pure Python, it only uses the standard library. And if you run it on Python, well, you're doing edge detection, but at 0 0.4 FPS. So like, if you want to do it in real time, it's not that great, right? So let's try it on PyPy. Two hundred and 
23 FPS. So right, so that's real time, right? But I could just show you a video of that and well, I could be lying, right? So that's live. Maybe. Light. Yes. And well I'm I'm not gonna even try to to do it live with C Python because well we don't have all day. Yes. Um, it's Can you see? Well, right, so like, we, we do iterations, right? Something that, well, if you want fast code, like, you don't, like, nobody does iterations on Python, right? When you use NumPy, you don't choose iterations because iterations are expensive, but like, I mean, why shouldn't you? Like, it's just regular programming. Sorry? So right, usually how do you how do you get like performance out of Python code? Like, and one of the first thing we say, and one of the first things Guido says is rewrite it in C. Which well, I mean, if you want to fa to write fast Python, like write it in C. Well, then you're just not writing Python, right? And um, well, C is just like not as convenient as Python, right? Maybe we can have like why is C not as good as Python, but I think we can find a lot of reasons. Um, first of all, it's harder to debug. Um, it's platform dependent. Um, like, it's type system isn't that great. Like, there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to use C. And then you have things like Cython, well, Cython is a lot better than C already, but I used to have to deal with pointers and stuff like that, so, like, you shouldn't have to deal with pointers anymore, like, or maybe you do, but if you're writing an operating system. And then you have small subsets of Pythons or dialects or with things like number, and, well, like, we're reaching something that's already pretty good, but, like, it has a very small set of things that it makes really fast. Like, for example, number, like, if you're working on numbers, then you're fine. But if you start having objects, then, well, it's as low as C Python. And then they also don't always respect Python semantics. For example, number, when an, integers, when an integer overflows, like in regular Python, it's just promoted to a long integer, and in number it just overflows. So like, if, if it doesn't respect the Python semantics, is it really Python? Maybe. So with PyPy, we just want people to write Python, and like, yes, only pay the cost for what you use. Like if, if you say, if you don't use any of the introspection features, then you, should, you should just shouldn't pay the cost for them. So for a long time, PyPy wasn't really good at interacting with C code. We, we used to recommend C types as, our, as a way of interacting with 
C code, but well, C types isn't that great and it's very easy to seg fold the interpreter. Like, it's even faster to, uh, it's even easier to seg fold than just writing plain C, which is telling something. So now we have something called CFFI, which is also available on CPython. Um, it's really the best tool I've used, well, at least in my opinion, and I haven't worked on CFFI, so I'm not biased. Um, it's basically, it works like Luajit's FFI, and it's, you basically copy declarations. Um, can I show you one example of CFFI? I think I can. So yes, that's how it works. You basically write, you get an FFI object, um, you write just regular C declarations, except for things where you say, well, like a pie type object, I don't, I don't want to know its layout. I just want to like, be able to pass it. So you, you, can say, you can say dot, dot, dot to say, or I don't know. And yes, right, it's just regular C declarations. And then you can, you can say, so it works at the API level on like C types, so you can use macros and everything. So you can also have declare C function inside Verify, verify is just by passed to the C compiler. And then yes, you just call functions as you would in regular Python functions. The overhead, yes, is it's on C Python it's well it's slower than C extensions. But on PyPy, like it's faster than, like it's as fast as just calling C from C. So. Yes, no, like that's what we usually do. So okay, yes, it's very fast on PyPy. So we use it for things like database bindings, and we also use it on binom PyPy to call things like FFT and well, Linux isn't implemented right now, but that's what it would use. And well, what's pretty good as well is that you can expose Python functions to C code. So like you can create your own, your own API if you want. It's what we are doing in, in with UWSGI. So UWSGI is a is a web server. It's one of the best web servers around, and you can embed PyPy inside inside it using C types uh, using CFFI. Sorry, and it's faster. Like um, we just benchmark the binding, like the binding between UWSGI and PyPy. And the load balancer like just couldn't keep up, so that's pretty fast. One of the problems with PyPy though is that C extensions don't work that well. They're slow, and usually I have to adapt them a little bit. But if you if you don't fall asleep until the end of the talk, I have something at the end of the talk that could interest you on that. 
So what's wrong with the CAPI? Um, the CAPI is very implementation dependent. So I was talking to a C Python developer and he told me how the CAPI was designed and basically the way it was designed is that is, well, we have this internal API, maybe we should tidy it up and expose it. And so what you end up with is something that's very implementation dependent. So for example, ref reference counting is the way garbage collection is done on C Python. PyPy does it differently. And so you have to emulate reference counting, which is slow. And then in, in the C API, you have something called a Py object, which is, which is the representation of an object. And it's just the internal representation that C Python has. So it's just a structure. And, and then um, things like Cython, for example, like look inside the structure and modify fields and everything, which is like PyPy just can't emulate that. And yes, it's, I think it's holding us back as a community because, well, like things like performance or removing the gill or stuff like that are harder because of the C API. So maybe we should invent a new API. I don't know, like, do people really want a new API? And I think, I think it would be great, but I'm not sure I, w I will be able to convince a lot of people. So yes, NumPyPy. So um, NumPyPy has, has been in development for a few years and we're seeing, kind of seeing the end of the tunnel. So yes, 80% of the test suit, test suit passes. Um, so you have most of NumPy, you have like FFT and just regular random stuff like that. And yes, what we're working on right now, what I'm currently working on is bringing Linalg and the object dtype. Um, the object dtype is especially complicated because, well, garbage collection basically. And we're also working on improving performance. So yes, where, where do we want to bring performance? So um, vectorized operation, like doing like an NDRA plus an NDRA, is it should be just as fast as NumPy. And then, well, like, I don't know if you come from other programming backgrounds, but the way we're using arrays is very different from other languages. Like other languages, they just write loops and and do stuff with inside loops. And I don't know, I think it's not, I think it would be easier to bring newcomers to like NumPy if it's just like you have an array and just choose the array as you would in another language. So on NumPyPy, arrays are, you can just do that. Arrays are, arrays should be, and well, we're having performance regressions now, but it used to be that it was as fast as, as just using an array, like using vectorized operations. And we're also working on bringing like that performance back. Like we have had performance regressions because we just added com more compatibility and just didn't really think of performance, but we will in a short future. And also at some point, something that we had and we may want to bring back is lazy evaluations. It would, it would really bring also an extra level of performance. So, okay, C extensions. So I have developed a tool called PyMetabiosis, which is um, a Python module that you can just pip install. And it's a bridge that allows you to use C Python modules on top of PyPy. The way it works is that you have a C Python, you have PyPy on one side and C Python on the other side running in the process. And you can, you can send values to between the two. And so NumPy arrays are just shared. So you don't have to copy every time. So if you have a one gig NDRA, you can, like, you don't pay the cost of like copying one gig of memory. And that's what we want in the short term to be able to use 
stuff like SciPy and Matplotlib. So the way it works, um, you basically just you have some a little bit of setup. So like the first four lines are just setup. So you can just enable the virtual end, then then you can import modules, and so with you can then import the pylon module, for example, and just run <laughs> Matplotlib on top of PyPy. We have also worked on something called JitPy, which is doing the, the same thing, but the other way around. So you have PyPy inside CPython. Um, it works kind of the same way as Numba, so you have a decorator that you can say, um, run this function inside PyPy. Um, and yes, you need a very recent version of PyPy because we enabled a new feature that allows you to do that. So yes, it really works kind of like Numba. You just declare a function as gtify, and um, you declare types, and then this function will run on PyPy. So what's great about this compared to things like Numba is that, yes, Numba has a very small sweet spot. And if you're outside that sweet spot, then it's just as slow as CPython. So PyPy is, is much better at this, and you're able to just use plain objects and everything. So what about the future of PyPy in the scientific stack? So we want to bring full NumPy support. I think we will be able to do that fairly soon. Um, improved extension compatibility. So with those two tools, we can we can probably do that. They're all, they're work in progress, but like being able to do that is not very expensive. Like I just spent one week writing PyMetabiosis, so we're able to be very productive on that. So hopefully we can bring this extension compatibility pretty soon. Um, yes, Cython currently doesn't work very well, so I would like to see Cython, like for, you, can, you can already use it through PyMetabiosis, but I would like to see a direct way of interacting with Cython, uh, probably through a new CAPI. And we're also working on removing the global interpreter. So maybe one day we will have just multi-thread Python running on PyPy and like having and working on NDRAs with like four threads or whatever. I think that would be really good. Yes, so maybe you can just try PyPy on your stuff and tell us tell us if you like it or not, what's wrong, what are we doing wrong, what are we doing right. And yes. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. So the GIF is the route forward to SDF or the <laughs> Yes. The way we're removing the gill is through STM, so um, STM will be used internally for um, inside PyPy, and it's also exposed to to Python programmers. But if you want to just use threads and logs, you can also do that. Except that it's still used internally to keep the state consistent. So. Um, Basically, in Python, uh, every bytecode is atomic, so we keep that same level of atom. And then you can use STM yourself if you want a like bigger at atomicity guarantees. Like you can just say um, with like we have a like with statement, so you can say with atomic and then a block of code, and that block of code is done.
atomically. When is it going to be released? Um, when it's done. <laughs> yes. No, like it's high, like it's a lot of researchy things. So like I think the current STM uh, version, like it's the eighth rewrite of STM or something. So like it depends. Maybe it's the r proper rewrite and it will be released soon. Or maybe we need 10 other rewrites. I don't know. Well, before that, like, you just needed to write your stuff in C to be fast on Python, right? Or having a way to generate C like Python. And, well, we are seeing languages like Julia or Go or stuff like that where, where you just write your code and it's just fast. So we want just a way of having fast stuff running, like, for example, web applications and, yes, code like that, we just like just write Python and have it run fast and it's the only tool that does this. Yes. I didn't hear you entirely. Maybe someone can repeat here. Yes. Well, both can exist, but it's really hard to do ahead of time optimizations on Python. It's almost impossible. Like people have tried and they've just failed. And then every few years, someone says, well, I'm just going to do it. And then like some PhD student or something. And then like every time people fail and every time people say, I'm the one who can do it and everyone fails. So I think like just in time is the way to go on Python. Yes. So is there a chance that if, if I say I annotate the types of a particular function, 
Mm -hmm. Is there a way by which I could say compile this or generate the machine code for that one function and say <coughs> shell with something? No, you can't. You so can't write it to. Yes, the problem with that is, well, the way memory works, right? Because you have the way we compile it, like we do constant folding on pointers and stuff like that, and well. Oh, so it's not an intermediate representation that you have to literally. Well, we built an intermediate representation, but like that re intermediate representation already has like that inside, and yes. And well, like people have tried and like. If the JVM doesn't do it, like it's impossible to do, basically, like the the way the way the Oracle they. Oracle JVM, oh, not the Oracle, the old Oracle JVM. So Oracle had their own implementation of Java, right? Yes. Before they were Sun, so they had uh, they had bytecode uh, or uh, they they were caching the JVM. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. So it's been done, but yes. um, I I think the Java world didn't see any benefits from it. Yes. Because it didn't put, so because Oracle when they bought Sun, they haven't ported that over to their own VM. Yes, yeah, so like if you want to be able to do that, you have to like some have some kind of indirection on pointers and stuff like that, and then well, you lose performance and. No more questions. One. Um, so, no, like PyPy is completely is a completely different executable. Yes, like yes, if you're using something like a bridge, then yes, you would pay the memory cost of having two interpreters. Yes. Yes. Um, so, like the um, so first of all, like PyPy uses more RAM than than C Python because well, you just need like to store the generated code on on RAM. But at the same time, we are like, for example, we run on the Raspberry Pi, which is well smallish, like it's not an embedded system, but like it's fairly small, and we run pretty well on the Raspberry Pi. So. <coughs> Yes. So you're saying a common stuff like the rest of the pipeline is slower than Python? Yes, currently, yes, it's. But it's how much? Is, is it like a tiny bit or a large? No, like it's pretty tiny, but yes, we want to I like. Have, I, Yes, it's, and we are working on that. Like in the next few months, it will be fixed. I think yes. So, um, so um, you say you want the speed of a of a loop over an empire array to be the same as uh, just using a vectorized system. Yes. Does that mean that you're possibly excluding any benefits that are to be had from using SSE or whatever? Like, um, we. Like for now, we don't have SSE yet, but it's something we really want to do. So, so if you add SSE, then there would still be a performance gap between using vectorized instructions. And yes, but it it depends. Like it, it can be fairly close. Like yes, you can go like that extra ten percent, but like it's already like in the same ballpark.
Yes. Is there scope for further optimization in the PyPy world to bridge that? Or? Well, yes, there's, well, there's two things. First is that, well, yes, we can bring more and more optimizations. And the other thing is that Numba doesn't respect the Python specifications. Right. So. But that's OK. But ignoring yes. the Python specifications. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, we can do more. We can, first of all, like we are really slow at compiling stuff. So like the overhead of having compilation is pretty high and we want to bring that down. So like you can reduce, you can compile more earlier, faster. And that's one of the things that would bring quite a performance improvement. Can only compile uh, JIT code that's worth JITing, or uh, so does it only, for example, JIT code that's being called a lot, or is it just JIT and JIT? No, you, so you have just um, an interpreter, like, like CPython, for everything that's not hot, and for what's hot, you, yes, you JIT it, yes. So, so you're doing some sort of hot spot profiling? Yes, well, basically, we just, we just have a counter on loops, and then, like, when it's run X amount of time, then you start tracing and jitting. And so you don't pay the cost of jit when your loops are running fast. No, yes, you don't pay. But yes. can you turn it on and off and say, I want aggressive jitting rather than... Yes, you have, like, variables saying, like, I want, I want to jit when the loop runs X times, when, like, and so we have a limit on the size of of loops, so you can say, I want bigger loops, I want smaller loops. You can. Um, so, no, it's runtime. It's runtime, you have like, if you say pi pi minus minus jit help or something, you have like all the description of all the things you can tweak. Yes? Sorry? Um, CPython will still have a future, I think. Like, it runs on a lot of platforms. It has a low memory footprint. And yes, and it's also like what, where the language is developed. So if you want to use like the newest language features, you can use CPython. Like, we're not trying to replace CPython entirely. Like, Having even like a small share, like out of out of all the Python users in the world, like even if have, having like one person is already a lot. I mean, we don't want to like kill C Python entirely. There's no point, and I think like all this diversity is pretty good. Like some people think it's bad that it's dividing the community or something, but I think it's great that we're able to like extend the amount of things we can do with Python. Thank you.